Welcome to the No Regrets Leadership Podcast, where leaders are empowered to equip and disciple men. Well, welcome to the uh, No Regrets Leadership Podcast. My name is Steve Sonderman, and I'm going to be your host for today. And uh, thanks uh, for, for listening. And just as a reminder, you know, the purpose of this podcast is to encourage and equip you in your leadership to men. And we know that every one of you is at a different place. Some of you are leading small groups. Some of you are ministering to the guys, your coworkers uh, that are around you day in and day out, or maybe at the club or whatever you're doing for a hobby. Um, some of you are working with a ministry to men in the local church. And some of you are associate pastors or senior pastors. And But wherever you're at, whatever role you have, we desire to come alongside of you and just to encourage you, empower you to more effectively reach men for Jesus, to root them in Jesus, and release them for kingdom impact. And so today, I'm really, really excited to have to have as our guest Andy, and Andy is the, the senior pastor at Cornerstone Church in Marshfield. And over the last probably three years now, Andy and I have a chance to, to sort of get to know each other and spend some time together. He was a part of our leadership cohort a couple years ago, and he'll talk more about that later and uh, have a chance to go up and speak at one of his men's events this past fall. And uh, so it's just been so exciting for me to see what, what's happened in his church and how his ministry to men have has grown over the years. And uh, and so the reason I want to have Andy on is that he's he's in the trenches. He's doing it. I mean, it's, it's real to him as a senior pastor and speaking every week and working with the men and working with all the ministries. Um, he's going to just bring a really nice perspective uh, for today. So Andy, thanks so much for being with us. I really appreciate it. Oh, thanks for having me, Steve. It's a joy to be with you, and you've been a blessing to me personally and to our church, and what a joy to get to, to spend this time with you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, you bet. You bet. So, you know, why don't you just uh, start by just telling the, the listeners a little bit about yourself and about your family and, and what you do? Yeah, so I grew up in Grand Forks, North Dakota, an hour and a half south of the Canadian border up there where it's even colder than Wisconsin. And and I uh, love being a North Dakota kid. I, I grew up in a, in a home that loved loved the Lord. And my dad uh, was the first example of a godly man to me. And I'm so grateful for that heritage. He introduced me along with my mom to Jesus at a really early age. And, and I grew up in a ministry mindset. Dad was always involved with the church. So was mom. She was my kid's choir director. And, and I went to college and met my bride through Campus Crusade for Christ, Christy. Uh, we fell in love. I was I was 19 when I met her. I was barely 21 when I married her. And we uh, we got involved with worship ministry uh, through Campus Crusade and saw the Lord do some neat things. And it sort of solidified our calling to ministry together. We thought we were going to go on staff with Crusade and be worship leaders and run around the country. And and yet the Lord uh, Lord grabbed our hearts for the local church. And I had a chance to, to, to go on staff with the church we were attending there as their first worship uh, per position. I was a worship coordinator at the beginning there and and just grew to love the church and see see God uh, use my gifts and passions and you know whatever I had uh, to, to serve him and to impact people and and so uh, we were in that role and started having kids we've, we've got uh, twin boys they came around in 2003 and they're awesome a gift from the Lord and then we had a, a daughter in 2006 and and so we've just been raising our family and serving in the local church and in 2013 I, I started a seminary program through Dallas uh, Theological Seminary and they uh, they launched a mobile campus up at at our church, and so I got to to pursue uh, theological education and found out that that teaching uh, was also one of my gifts and passions, and and started to to have a stirring to to maybe speak in a little bit more uh, full full arguments rather than sound bites as a worship pastor. I love being a worship pastor. I have so much respect for worship pastors, but uh, but just felt like the Lord was moving me. And so in 2018, we came to Central Wisconsin, where here I, I get to be the senior pastor of this wonderful church, and really grateful for the chance to sit at a leadership table and, and impact uh, people for, for Christ and, and uh, you know, be about the, the business of the Lord here. So, yeah. yeah. Wow. What a journey. I mean, wow. <laughs> it's so exciting to see how God has just been working. And, you know, even like you said, to just have a dad that modeled what it means to be a man and to, to be involved in ministry and to work. That's just a, that's a gift. That's a gift yeah. that not everyone has. But I, I had a very similar thing with my dad, just a strong mm -hmm. example. And, you know, work downtown, but so involved in ministry. It's just sort of what you grow up with. You just, you know, yeah. just sort of all. 
Yeah, man, I, I hear other guys talking about, you know, these radical testimonies and things and praise God for radical testimonies. My <laughs> my testimony is as vanilla as it comes and I wouldn't trade it for the world. And no, my right. dad is is still my hero. We we talk all the time and and he loves Jesus. And so I, I'm just so grateful. Yeah, for, for that and grateful for my whole family. And and but but yeah, just just to see the example of what godly manhood uh, really is from the very beginning. Yeah. Well, you know, one of the things that I really appreciate about you and one of the reasons the things I wanted to talk about today and wanted to have you on the podcast is that, you know, having getting to know you and watched you and your, your with your guys uh, up firsthand, um, you're you're a senior pastor that really, really has a passion for 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 men. And I'm not just talking men's ministry, but just for the men in your church and in your in, in your in your community. And Let's just start sort of broad and just say, over the last few years, as you've been doing ministry, what are some things you've learned about ministry to men and just about men in general, and maybe about ministering to men in in the context of the church and community? Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, as I as I've thought more intentionally about uh, leading men, I, I think men are are hungry. They're hungry to to know the Lord. They're hungry to know what to do with their faith. And and I I think they're in that hunger. They're they're a little bit dissatisfied with just taking it by rote, and 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 by you know uh, just because you know everybody else is doing it this way. Why do I have to do it this way? But they're they're, they're hungry for an authentic experience in the Lord. And and uh, and so as I've been gathering and guys, you know, together, we, one of the things we did early on with our men's ministry here is, is uh, you taught us, Steve, uh, in the cohort to, to build the community first that you're going to try to replicate. And that was so, so informative for me. I, I came to you uh, several years ago looking for ministry in a box. And um, I knew that it was more than that, but I kind of wanted the shortcut, the cheat code, you know, yeah, and right. uh, and and what I got was so much better. And so you taught you taught the cohort to 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 try to build that that community first. And so we just we said okay, we'll we'll try that. And we got about ten guys together and just started gathering around a campfire. And I had read an article by Kevin Stefanski. He's the former offensive coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings. That's why I care about him because I'm a Vikings fan. Okay, but, all right. Well, sorry. we'll start with you. <laughs> sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but but he went to the Browns and and he got his his football team together and just re- recognizing that guys are hungry for the for the Lord perhaps in that context certainly for relationships certainly to know and to be known and so he started mm-hmm. having those guys share their four H's their their history their heroes their heartbreaks and their hopes and and he found that it was really uh, transforming for their culture and I thought you know what I think that'll apply here so uh, we spent about six months just around campfires in each other's backyards whatever just sharing each other's stories and uh and that really knit us together uh, in that way so i i think you know th- just, that, i'm just gonna interrupt i'm sorry but yeah, please. i just have to because i love that I, I i maybe i've heard it somewhere but maybe it was you okay the four h's let's go over them one more time it's, yeah it's history. So like, what's your background? What's your, you know, what's your, what's your bio? Um, who are your heroes uh, growing? So hearing the guys talking about their heroes just says a lot about who they are and where they come from, but then also mm-hmm. heartbreaks. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, so what, what challenges did they face along the way? And then what are their hopes given that? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it was a really rich experience, you know, and, and I found, and I guess I, I wanted to, to say too, recognizing that guys are hungry for an authentic experience. I, I knew that as as maybe the, the guy that was tasked with the leadership responsibility with them, that, that I had to go first. <laughs> and so I remember it was, we were at my house and, and sitting around the um, the campfire and I shared my own history and heroes and heartbreaks and, and hopes. And I, I remember at the end of it feeling like, oh man, did I overshare? I was it too much, you know, did I, uh, did I just wreck these guys' image of me, whatever that might have been, you know, prior? But I was pretty raw in it, and uh, and what I found is that opened the kind of opened the floodgates for those guys to also share. And they thought, you know, if if he can mess up that bad and and uh, experience, you know, kind of the whatever whatever I experienced, you know, that, that maybe I can talk about what I experienced too. And and so that was uh, that just kind of was a, a, a good launching pad into relationship with those guys. You know, let's just let's just stop here for a second, Andy, because this is so good. Because I think I know as I talk to senior pastors, oftentimes or just pastors, associate senior pastors, they're a little worried of sharing. That they go, I, you know, I got to keep a little bit of distance because that's safer, and I don't want to let my guard down, or they might tell someone, or you know, my story's going to get out, and then I'll be embarrassed, and everyone's going to know. 
Andy, what would you say to that? Because I don't know, you've probably heard that, but I know I have for sure. Yeah. Wow, respond to yeah. That. You're a senior pastor and you shared from, you just were very open with these guys. Yeah, you know, I, I found, and, and I, I go back to my dad. I, I think my dad modeled that for me growing up that, you know, my dad was a successful businessman. He knew what he was doing, a good leader, but he just was never afraid to talk about what he struggled with, you know, with, with me. And I suppose he didn't share everything. Like he kept an appropriate, you know, relationship. I was right. his, his kid, right? His son. Um, right. But but he, he modeled that. And so for me, um, what I found is is I don't, I don't necessarily uh, need the whole church to know every single detail of what I'm struggling with. Uh, but I have guys that that know that. But if I'm going to err, I want to err on the side of vulnerability over anything else. And so I, you know, I I try never to share stories where I'm the hero. I, I share a lot of stories where I'm the goat, you know. And uh, I just think people need to see that um, that walking with Jesus is a real experience, whether you have the title pastor or not. And, and the great thing about walking with him is that his grace covers our mess and, and then utilizes and, and capitalizes on our strengths, you know? And so, so here the Lord, uh, if he can use the guy like me, uh, who messed us up, he can use, he can use you too. And I think that it translates especially well with guys. Yeah, I, I think you're absolutely right. And I love I love the fact that you said that you went first. And I, I think that that really for any leader, especially a small group leader, um the, the the principle is that your group will only be open and as vulnerable as you are. Mm-hmm. And and so we do need to take the lead on that. And uh I think there's so many guys out there that when they hear a, a leader open up, they're like, Oh my goodness, I I, I thought I was the only one. You know, yeah, they struggle yeah. too, or they might not be the same struggle, but but they have yeah. struggles. They don't have it all together, and they're you know they have some areas yeah. of some hurt and hurt. Yeah, Steve. I mean, I, I think guys live in a lot of fear, and I have fear too. You know, like I'm afraid that that when my when my junk gets out there, that that I might be rejected. And 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 we we have those very real sort of um, core you know needs. And yet, if we can sort of normalize that, hey, it's okay to acknowledge that and to talk about that. And you know, yeah, I I, I might have been nervous if the guys would would take it, but it's worth the risk. And if we can just be willing to take the risk with each other, what we typically find. I suppose there's that outlier where somebody makes, you know, makes fun of us, that, that whole fear when you're a little kid and you get made fun of on the playground that, that you know, that's, we, we sort of have that lingering with us. Uh, but, but it, that's the exception. Most of the time guys say, Oh man, that makes me love you even more. And, uh, and yeah. that's been my experience. I'm grateful. Yeah. That's so true. I, that that's very helpful. And I think, I, I don't know who said it, but I remember it was sort of like they, the, the paraphrase, they said, you know, I'm, if I, if I share who I really am and you don't like it, then that's all I got. You know, mm-hmm. it's like that. And, and then so that we just sort of hold back because we're afraid of that rejection, like you said, mm-hmm. but yeah. boy, you hit on so many good things that men want to be known. That's another, another really key thing. So. Yeah. And anything else, you know, as far as when you look back on your experience so far with men, that you sort of learned about men and who they are or um, what they're looking for? Anything else you'd say in there? Yeah, you know, I, I think so. So I was a worship pastor for 18 years and, and I worked with artists and artists. are I love artists. They have a unique mm-hmm. temperament. And I did a lot of study and reading, but but sh- shifting into my role as a lead pastor, I found, you know, not, lo and behold, not everybody's an artist. And mm-hmm. and and when you when you engage with men, it's different than engaging with your typical artists. And so um so I had to learn to adapt my leadership style a little bit. And I, there are a couple of words that that uh, perhaps resonate and as I've thought about this, that that uh, men appreciate clarity. They they want to know like, hey, is what I'm doing ma- does it does it matter? How does it fit into the big picture? And uh, do we have a, a sense of direction? But they don't like control, and and so um, to to try to navigate that tension between clarity and control has been uh, a lot of fun, a little bit of a challenge at times. You know, I'm I find that my own inclination is to want to want to write a, a thick agenda and and get through it and make sure that we're doing, you know, that ministry in a box, you know, kind of a mentality. Um, right. But to, 
Yeah, but to leave space for the guys to to exercise their own creativity and autonomy um, has been really important. So so I've I found that um, navigating that tension, walking with clarity, um, but but giving up control uh, is has been really important. I think the guys have, have responded pretty well. They would tell you I'm I'm on a continuum there. There are times when I'm probably a little more controlling than they would like, and uh, and there are times when they would want a little more clarity. But uh, but it seems like those are helpful uh, categories. Very helpful. I, I, I've not heard it described like that, but I really like that picture because I know that, you know, so often guys, I mean, they're, they're, they're running companies or they're running departments, they're teaching classes. And, and then we try to micromanage them in the church so often and say, you know, okay, that brochure has got to be this color or that color or whatever. It's just like, just let them go. Give them some freedom. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah but there's a tension there. I love, I love that, uh, that, 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 that picture. Men, our heart here at No Regrets is to see a spiritual awakening among men and to empower them to be leaders in their home, church, workplace, and world, and to develop and grow men's ministries in churches across the street and around the globe. And you guys are the ones that can make that dream a reality. To make a one-time gift or become a monthly donor, visit our website at menwithnoregrets.org backslash give and make an eternal impact today. Earlier, you mentioned uh, being in the cohort and it was probably a couple yeah. of years ago now when, when you were in yeah. there. And um, can you just describe for our listeners what that was like and what you experienced there and how, how it might have been helpful? Yeah, Steve, it was tremendously helpful. I loved it to, to talk about it. So I I, uh, I got here in 2018 and realized we we needed to do something with men's ministry uh, more than what we were experiencing. And we had taken some some shots at it, but we had a guy that was leading and then left. And so here we were about a year or two. COVID happened, and we just didn't have much going on uh, formally. And because of that, we didn't have much going on organically either. We had some some groups, but but not uh, not intentional. And so I reached out to Dan Fiorenza, uh, who works with you and and uh, he was the guy that that my predecessor here said hey you should talk to him and and so he told me about this cohort and said you should you should join it sounded great and so I grabbed one of our other guys who also had a heart for men and and we jumped in and and it was uh, it was a group of I think 15 or 16 of us uh, with you in a zoom call and and uh, there we were interacting with with you and and you were talking to us just like normal guys and coaching us and listening to us and we were talking to each other too we were learning together yeah. and and, uh, you know, I had been through a seminary experience and had a great experience. I love my seminary experience, but I kept thinking, man, this is like on the ground, rich, really good stuff, uh, not just for leading men, but also, you know, leading in the church and certainly targeted for leading men. Um, and uh, and it wasn't, you know, it wasn't academic. It wasn't, but it was rich and it was really good. And I felt like I could digest it and I could transfer it to the guys um, that I was working with. So, you know, so some of the key things that that I, I came away from uh, with from that experience, I, uh, you referenced it earlier, I think, um, in your in your intro, even the four R's. Uh, so reaching, rooting, releasing and reproducing. And and um, I hadn't thought in those categories directly before. And it just helped bring clarity to, oh, this is a strategy for reaching people and reaching guys in particular. And, and so um, we've, we've just adopted that as our strategy here for disciple making, that we want to reach people for Christ and, and root them in Christ. And then that releasing piece, you know, I, you could probably uh, read through the lines. I have a little bit of a control issue sometimes. And so given that up, you know, uh, but, but boy, how important is it to release people to do what God's given them to do and then, and then not to stop there, but to try to reproduce that. That's that's becoming really important for us, and we're starting to see that. Um, we've got some growth groups that have practiced that and are now split into two, and we got a guy that's was brand new to leading a, leading a men's group, and now he's leading it all by himself, and they split off, and the guy that was mentoring him is going to do it all over again, and so... Uh, yeah, just just all those kind of practical, you know, I was looking for men's ministry in a box and I got something so much better and uh, I felt like I was equipped. I had some categories for how to engage guys specifically um, that I could run with and, and to have Bill with me. Um, our, our, he was a great cheerleader through the process. And and so it wasn't just me talking. It was Bill saying, guys, we got to we got to try this, you know, and and um, and so we walked away with just all kinds of tools. I still have um, the the little um 
uh, the little uh, card thing that you gave us. Oh, yeah. I, I refer yeah. to it fairly often, man. It's um, okay. it's been really helpful. So uh, you know, the, whether it's leading a discipleship group or th- things like that, it's um, I keep it handy. So yeah, so it's yeah. A great right. experience. Well, it was just so good having you. And then you know, I think I I think what I've heard at least from the guys, and I know this was true for you, is you meet some other like-minded guys from around the country. Yeah, and, you know, and so it's not totally. just we're all learners together. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ron and, and, uh, and, and John, we, we've, you know, stayed in touch some and it's yeah. fun to, you know, champion what they're doing from afar down in St. Louis and, and uh, yeah, pr- praise God for, for those types of relationships. You, you realize you're not, you know, you kind of know it, but, but you, you run and do ministry and, and it's, it's important to, there, there's other people wrestling with what you're wrestling with and trying to make it happen. And, and uh, there's a lot to learn from each other for sure. Yeah. Well, I just, you know, I, I just, I just flew in this morning uh, from St. Louis and I spent the last couple of days with the team down there in, oh, with right on. and just had a wonderful time. They're, they're really nailing it just as you are um, mm. fun stuff. Okay. So, okay. It's been a couple of years uh, since the cohort. And I know you've put in place some things because I've, I've witnessed it. Like I said, I was up there last fall. What would you say are some benefits of having an intentional ministry to men? What have you seen as a senior pastor, you know, sort of, yeah. What are some of the, the benefits that you've experienced? Yeah. So I have at least two uh, things that come to mind prominently. One is uh, getting guys involved in leadership and in ministry. You know, we we had several guys that they would come to church and they would kind of show up with, and their wives were doing all kinds of stuff, but they were wondering, where do I fit? I'm not a musician. You know, I could be an usher and that's fine. Um, but but how do I how do I actually make a difference in other people's lives? And so we had a guy that, that took our, our leadership class um, here that we offer at Cornerstone and and at the end, he's asking, what, what do I do? And I invited him. He had uh, actually kind of saw this modeled in your, in your ministry. He has some administrative gifts and wasn't going to necessarily be an upfront guy. But just to say, hey, Dan, I, th- I think you could help me uh, bring some structure to this ministry. Why don't, you, why don't you jump in and get involved? And and here he's been doing a great job behind the scenes. He was our prime primary guy when we did the No Regrets Conference on site here. And he's making a huge difference in guys' lives. So I, th- I think releasing guys into leadership opportunities opportunities has been a big deal. And then, and then, uh, you know, Steve, you came up here last fall and spoke and one of the cool things that happened uh, with that was we had a couple of guys there that weren't at all plugged in to to any sort of a community, and they were kind of lone rangers. They're actually military guys and um, and kind of had a mindset that, well, you know, my military was my community. That's never going to happen again. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to try it um, because it, it's not going to be the same. And, but they came to, they came to that event and they, they, um, they heard other guys plugging into community and they heard your talk and they heard one of our guys share how he was a military guy and thought he didn't need any, any new community right. either. And, uh, and they listened and they they decided you know what um, we could take the next step and and so they they joined a, a base camp, and they started base camp last fall and they've gone through it they've been uh, very faithful and showing up every week and and uh, we did a chili championship here at Cornerstone in January kind of to get ready for uh, for no regrets, and they were the testimony and they both got up there and this wow. this guy interviewed them and he said hey what's God been doing in your life and they they both looked at these men and said hey I know where you you are you are some of you are here and you think community is stupid. I don't need friends. I can do my own thing. But I'm here to tell you that's what I thought. And I, I don't think that anymore. I, I, I know that uh, I need other guys in my life. And and they, they said it very similarly. They're, they're, they're friends now. They're, they're going through, they've done base camp two and they're ready for three now. And uh, and they said they're never going back. Uh, and and those are their words. I'm never going back. I'm never not going to be in a community with other men following Jesus. And and it's been really exciting to to see that. So you, you know there are guys like that in all our churches and all our communities who they're just hurting. They they need community, but they'd never admit it. And and so to create some structure where it's safe to take a first step and, and sort of a next step and say, okay, um, I can do that. I can go golfing with some other guys, or I can show up at a on fire and you know i guess that speaker he'll be okay <laughs> you know he was great right. by the way but uh but you know the, the, i can do that um if you can create that that the bones that trellis you know the trellis and the vine man then then the spirit comes in and says okay i, I got gotcha. you and um and and here are these guys I, I think the trajectory of their lives has changed uh and and i, I rejoice in that so and that's you know that's having a men's ministry yeah 
Yeah, you that was a great event. You you, you developed an environment, uh, like you said, and then where where guys could connect in a safe way, easy way. That was the biggest bonfire I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Yeah, I, I still have video. I showed my kids and my grandkids. I think it had to be 30 feet high. I don't know. Oh, was, man. Was, we bring it up here, man. We bring it. <laughs> that, was, that, was no, that was no suburban bonfire. That was a Northwoods bonfire. That was yeah. great. Awesome. Yeah, but, those, but I, I love what you're saying there. Those are some really great benefits um, of seeing guys getting get involved in ministry and leadership and connected. You know, I think they say the biggest – um, struggle that men have today. The number one illness is loneliness, and yeah. and and they're looking for that connection and um, that place to be known, like you said. And boy, just to see that you guys are doing that—that's that's absolutely wonderful. Thanks, um, thank you. Okay, I know. Gosh, we're running out of time here. I'm, I I got so many things I want to talk to you about. So here's another one I have for you. Is this Andy? Is that you're a senior pastor? And I think there's some senior pastors maybe listening, and they're not sure, how do I support, how do I encourage the guys who are involved in ministry to men? What what yeah. what sort of can be your role, and how can you get behind them and support what they're doing? Any any thoughts there as you've you know been in that role now for a number of years? What does that look like for other senior pastors? Yeah, you know, I, I think... Um, as I as I think about the answer to that, I look at my, the senior pastors I've had that have been encouraging me as a man, and mm -hmm. I've had some awesome senior pastors, just got godly men that love the Lord, and I knew loved me, and I knew would support me, and and so what what really ministered to me f from them is I knew they were safe, I knew I could talk to them and be honest about what I was struggling with, and and I knew that they cared, and and so you know a little goes a long way. Um, I, I I've come to find out being a, a senior pastor that uh, it is pretty demanding. There's a lot of, there are a lot of things that pull at you, a lot of things that need your attention and crises that come up and, and praise God that that's the role and, and it's, it's good. But, but um, I, I, I think the temptation might be to think that I have to be everything all at once to, to everybody. But man, that, that hallway conversation that, that says, Hey, how, you know, how you doing? How's your, how are your kids? Um, and, and remembering something that they shared the last time you talked uh, that just, that that goes a long way. I think um, I found, you know, in my role here, I probably won't always lead the men's ministry directly. I, I still am now because we've been building it. Um, we're hiring a, a position that I think will will take over, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful for the resources to do that. But to to kind of get out in front of it and champion it um, to the church and to the guys, you know, when when they know that that I I'm invested and and you know me Andy Cavern and whatever, but but my office. I guess, you know, is invested in it. That that yeah. says something to them. And, oh, and it's yeah. So so you know, I, I think um I think just being willing to to be one of the guys, you know, to show up at the golf event or, and and talk to them like a normal person and uh, and encourage them and 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 they know they know when you're when you're genuine and and they'll come to you when they have a crisis or uh, when they need something but uh, just coming alongside them and loving them uh, as best you can yeah, yeah. that's some, some very good words i love it that's so helpful i think really for any of us uh, as leaders of men but also thinking specifically of, of associate pastors or pastors and working with their guys um, those are all very helpful principles so, Andy, just to close, one of the things I always ask guys, or I often ask guys, is what have you been reading lately and anything yeah. you could recommend um, for the guys? Yeah, so I've got a, a guy that's done some coaching with me, and he put me on this book a couple of years ago, and and um, it's a thirty a thirty day prayer book for leaders. It's called Leadership Prayers by Richard Kriegbaum, and, and Richard was a president of Fresno Pacific University, and. Um, I didn't. I hadn't heard of him before. I don't think he. I think that's the only book he's published, as far as I know. But it's this little gem, and and I find that um, in my leadership role, uh, he speaks a language that that makes sense to me, and he's talking to God, and so that's been really rich. I, I'm reading it through for the second time. Um, yeah, and then and then a couple of books. I'm a part of the the Church Evangelism Institute, a cohort uh, with them. So I jump from cohort to cohort, Steve. But, yeah, <laughs> but um, cohort. Yeah, yeah, right. 
but I'm learning about evangelism. And so I'm, I'm reading um, a book called Organic Outreach by Kevin Harney, and then another book by uh, Rick Richardson called You Found Me. And uh, those have been helpful to help me think about what it means to reach uh, men and women, uh, to create a, a missional influence community, and to try to try to reach the world um, that's around us for, for the name of Jesus Christ. So those have been good. Great. I am going to look into all three of those. And for those that are listening, we will put those in the show notes, we'll have the titles and the authors, and then a link to, you know, Amazon or somewhere where you can get those as well. Um, because, you know, as we say here often, you know, uh, when, uh, when a leader stops learning, they stop leading. And so we just got to constantly be sharpening ourselves, whether it's being in a cohort, like Andy just mentioned, or listening to a podcast, reading a book. Um, just keeps us sharp and keeps us it keeps us fresh. So, Amen. Amen. well, listen, I, I also want to just mention as we're closing here that uh, Andy talked about the cohort. And guys, I want you to know that we are going to be starting another one uh, towards the end of April. Uh, we're going to have one on Thursday night, one on Monday night. And so if you're in a church situation and you go, I want to more effectively, I want to learn how to develop a plan and a, and a, how to, to minister to the guys in my church and community, we'd love to have you be a part of our cohort. You can go on our website and all the information's there as far as the dates, the times, what's involved and what we cover and all those things. But just want to just mention that since we just spent a little bit of time discussing it. So, well, listen, Andy, thank you so much for today and just all the, the gold that you have shared with us. This has been so, so helpful. I really appreciate it. Oh, it's been my pleasure, Steve. Thanks for having me. And I'm so grateful for you and for your ministry to me personally and to, to the men up here in central Wisconsin, north central Wisconsin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, guys, it's been great having you again today. And on behalf of Andy and myself, uh, thanks for listening. Again, if this was, you know, encouraging in any way, just, you know, forward it to, to one of your friends, to some of your, your, your co-leaders, your small group leaders. And, uh, and then if you have a chance, give us a review. We'd love to, to hear what you, uh, what you think. So, again, have a, have a great week, and we look forward to uh, talking with you next week. Thank you for joining the No Regrets Leadership Podcast. For more information and to access past recordings, please visit www.menwithnoregrets.org slash podcast.